Good evening, everyone, and welcome to week four of Conroe Highest ISD High School football. I'm David Laney, and tonight we are here at Buddy Moorhead Stadium in Conroe, Texas, to watch a district matchup between the Grand Oaks Grizzlies and the Caney Creek Panthers. Both teams are looking to get their first district win tonight, with the Grizzlies coming off a hard-fought 38-28 loss last week to College Park while the Panthers hope to get things back on track after a 42-9 loss last week to Conroe. The Grizzlies are led by head coach Sean McDowell, while campus athletic director and head coach Kendall Hyman will be leading the Panthers. I should also add that tonight is homecoming for the Caney Creek Panthers. Other games being played by Conroe ISD teams this weekend. The Woodlands and New Caney Went to uh, battle last night at Wood Forest Bank Stadium, just down the road on uh, I-45, with Woodlands coming out on top of that one, 49-42. to College Park is at home tonight, taking on the Cleveland, uh, taking on Cleveland at Wood Forest Bank Stadium. And this game is also being live streamed tonight on the Conroe ISD Athletics channel on YouTube. Conroe is away playing a key district game, I should say, tonight at Yates Stadium in Willis. Both Conroe and Willis right now are 3-0 overall and 1-0 in the district. And don't forget, you can uh, get notifications of all the games that are being streamed on the Conroe ISD Athletics YouTube channel by subscribing to that channel. Real quickly, let's run through some uh, district stats as we prepare get ready for tonight's game. As I mentioned before, Conroe and Willis are both 3-0 and and 1-0 in district play. Caney Creek is 2-1. and uh, The Woodlands I mentioned earlier, they're 2-2 two two now, so they're really, I guess, a half game in front in the district stats with that win last tonight. Oak Ridge is 1-2. College Park also one and two. So uh, again, that matchup up the road in Willis tonight is going to be a key matchup with those two undefeated teams going to battle against one another. Some other interesting district stats to go through. Key players we're going to be looking at tonight for Caney Creek, Jaden Graves is fifth in the district, currently fifth in the district in rushing. And these are through the uh, first uh, three games, I should say. Daryl Ellis for Caney Creek is sixth in the district in rushing. In terms of passing, Grant Smith for Grand Oaks is now fourth in the district in passing, where Christian Aguilar for Caney Creek is 10th in passing. Punt returns, Caney Creek has Daryl Ellis fourth in the district and Trey Jackson is uh, tied for second in the district for Caney Creek with interceptions. We're going to go back to the field real quickly here as we prepare for the game. Kickoff is at 730. Weather, I wouldn't call it necessarily perfect, but compared to what we've had for the past uh, two weeks, uh, with temperatures so hot that we had to delay our kickoff till 8 o'clock. I would say this is outstanding weather. Had showers come through earlier Stop today, cooled it off. I would say by the time This is Donnie Buckaloo with Buckaloo Chevrolet. After two and a half years, I'm proud to say we have new Chevrolets in stock today and are receiving new inventory daily. At Buckaloo Chevrolet, what you see is what you get. We don't charge market adjustments or added equipment you don't want. The price you see is the price you pay, so don't pay over MSRP. On I-45 in Conroe or shop BuckalooChevrolet.com. It's a better buy at Buckaloo. It's 
not enough to be the leader in robotic assisted procedures if we're not by your side for every step of your recovery, guiding you back to what makes you, you. Because it's not enough to replace your need if we're not getting you to the moments that can't be replaced. Memorial Hermann, advancing health, personalizing care. You've got a lot going on, so how do you find time to take care of you? At Houston Methodist, we work around your busy life. There's same day visits when you're sick, online scheduling with specialists, access to all your records through my chart, and video visits 24 seven if you need urgent care. Bringing you Houston Methodist's expertise, wherever, whenever you need it. That's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. For over 40 years, Wood Forest National Bank has proudly supported the youth and schools of this great community. Our bank has grown through the years, and Montgomery County is our home. With over 30 convenient branch locations right here in Montgomery County, we are your community bank. Next time you're in the area, stop by and say hi. But for now, sit back and enjoy the game. All right, I was just mentioning that the weather tonight is really great weather. Should be in the low, probably low 70s by the time, uh, or at least mid 70s by the time kickoff. Again, both of these teams, Caney Creek and Grand Oaks looking for their first district win. We'll return to the field for our pregame activities. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing.
All right, an outstanding performance by the Caney Creek, Caney Creek Choir with our national anthem. I'm not sure you'll hear a better choir performance anywhere. Definitely not a better high school choir performance than what you were just treated to. We're awaiting the coin toss. We'll be getting kicked off here momentarily. Again, both of these teams 0-1 in the district right now, looking for their first district win. I'd have to say on paper, they're probably pretty well matched up. Should be a great game. Katie Creek has won a toss, elected to receive. Good luck, men. All right, you heard it there. Katie Creek has won the toss, decided to take the ball. Flags are pretty much uh, laying uh, flat. Very little wind. Temperature, as I mentioned earlier, pretty good for football. A lot better than what we had in the first weeks of the season. Appreciate you joining us tonight. One of two games being streamed on the Conroe ISD Athletics channel on YouTube. That other game being played just down the road on I in I at uh, Wood Forest Bank Stadium. College Park taking on Cleveland. Cleveland really one of only two teams in the district that are not Conroe ISD programs. Little pooch kick. Be fielded at the 28. Looking for some room, got some room. Gonna try to make it toward the middle of the field. Getting toward the middle of the field into Grizzly territory, although still on his feet, taken off his feet right at about the 12-yard line. Huge run back, huge run back. Graves on the carry for Caney Creek, and just like that, Caney Creek is in the red zone. No penalty flags on the play. Looks like they're gonna mark it right at the 14. That is where Caney Creek will take over, first and 10. Christian Aguilar calling the signals tonight for Caney Creek. Two receivers on the far side. He'll look to throw, look to throw. Got his mate, up man open in the flat, down to the eight, five. Gonna take some tacklers with him. Be taken out, off his feet around the two yard line. Bennett on that reception and run. DeGeorge on the tackle for the Grizzlies. And just like that, Caney Creek is deep, deep in Grizzly territory, threatening to score. Looks like the ball was marked at the three yard line. Second and goal. Hand off in the middle. Looking for an indication, then we have a score. Would not be denied. Graves again on that touchdown carry. And in just a few plays, Caney Creek is about to take a seven to nothing score on a homecoming night. Massey on the kick. And the kick is good. So our, our score with only a, just a few minutes into the game, Caney Creek seven. Grizzlies zero. Good hard run there. Well, if that wasn't a wake up call for the Grizzlies, I don't know what was or what is.
another pooch kick. He'll come up and grab it at the 25, up to the 30. Try to elude a two, few tacklers and he'll be taken off his feet around the 32 yard line and that's where the Grizzlies will take over. First and 10 on their initial offensive possession, trailing this one seven to nothing. That was Benitez on the kick. Personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense, number 15. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Timeout, Taney Creek, first time out of the half.
Aguilar calling the signals. Hand off in the middle, hit behind the line of scrimmage and taken down right at about the 45 yard line. Rampshire on the carry. Tang on the tackle for the Grizzlies. Good defensive stand there by the Caney Creek Panthers. That sack put, put the uh, Grizzlies back and outside of field goal territory. They had to go for the fourth first down, couldn't make it. Rolling, looking to throw, being pressured, and he'll be taken down for about a 10-yard loss. Looks like the ball is on the ground, and the Grizzlies have it. Good defensive play there by the Grizzlies. Rush, heavy rush, knocked the ball loose, scooped it up, and just like that, the Grizzlies are going to be threatening again. The ball sitting on the Panther 42-yard line. Thompson on the tackle. Didn't catch the number of the player who picked the ball up. Smith back out on the field to call the signals. Grizzlies will try it again. First and 10, ball sitting on the Panther 37-yard line. Looking to throw, looking to throw, got time. Got time, and now he's going to be hit, and taken down right at about the 39-yard line. He'll lose a couple. McMillan on the tackle for the Panthers. We'll call it second and 12. Grizzlies trying to get something going here on offense. He'll roll, looking to throw, being pressured and taken down for another loss all the way back to around the 47 yard line. We'll see where they're gonna mark it. Yeah, they're gonna mark it right at the 47. It'll be third and about 19. Good, strong rush by the Panther defense. McMillan on that tackle, that tackle, that sack. Third and 20. Again, the Grizzlies trying to get something going here on offense. Looking to throw, being pressured. Got his man open in the middle. That, yeah, I thought that's probably going to draw the pass in a interference flag. We'll see where they mark it. Looks like there are a couple of flags on the play. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. There you go. Pass interference. 15-yard penalty with an automatic first down. That will give the Grizzlies new life in this drive. Ball now sitting on the Panther 37-yard line. First and 10. Five forty-three left in the first quarter. Panthers have played some good defense. He'll hand it off, make it to the uh, pass the line of scrimmage, and into the secondary. Get a good gain out of it. Looks like they're going to give him about seven on the carry. Graves on the carry for the Grizzlies. Correction: Graves on the tackle for the Panthers. We'll call it second and about four. Smith looking to throw, being pressured. Going to roll out. Got his man open in the middle. Still on his feet, down to the 10, trying to elude tacklers. And will be taken off his feet at the 10-yard line. Good open field catch there by Cloud for the Grizzlies. That'll move the chains and put them down at the ball marked right at the 10-yard line. Mendez on the tackle for the Panthers. Hand off in the middle again, got a hole. Breaking tackles, gonna get down to around the three yard line. 
Caney Creek's indicating they got a, a uh, recovery, but I'm not seeing an indication. Yes, yes, ball goes over. A lot of mistakes in this game, a lot of mistakes so far. So it looked like it was going to be a score for the Grizzlies because of a uh, mistake, and now Panthers have the ball on their own four-yard line. 446 left in the first quarter. Aguilar will be standing just inside his goal, own goal line. Hand off, looking for some room. Just trying to get it away from the uh, end zone. Looks like he'll get it out to around the six yard line. Ellis on the carry for the Panthers. Looks like he'll give him a couple out of that. We'll call it second and eight. Gave Aguilar a little bit of breathing room where he was standing in his end zone. Now he's one yard out. Hand off again, trying to make it through the line and uh, nothing there. Looks like it's gonna be a no game. We'll call it third and eight. Let's see where they mark him. Ellis again on the carry for the Panthers. Panthers leading this one seven to nothing with 3.55 left in the first quarter. I would have to say I believe these teams are, teams are pretty evenly matched. Aguilar calling the signals. He'll fake a handoff, a little toss pass, and will go incomplete. Bennett, the intended receiver. Caney Creek will have to punt. Grizzly should get some pretty good field uh, position out of this, out of this uh, kick. Panther kicker will be standing probably close to the back of his end zone. Very little wind, shouldn't be a factor. Carry on doing the kicking, no rush. Not a good kick. It's gonna be fielded at the 38, down to the 35. Take, taken off his feet right there, around the uh, 31. Alexander on the on the uh, return for the Grizzlies. And it uh, looks like they're gonna move it out to about the 32 yard line. That's where the Grizzlies will restart. They've had a couple of good deep penetrations, but just haven't uh, mistakes have hurt them. Turnovers. So they continue to trail seven to nothing. First and 10. Ball sitting During at the, the Panthers. We have a personal foul. Sideline interference on Grand Oaks. That'll be 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. It'll be first and 10, Grand Oaks. I believe you heard that one, a sideline infraction. You hate to get those against Grand Oaks. Typically you hear a warning first before you see the penalty. They went straight to the penalty. Pushes them all the way back to the 47 yard line. He'll hand off. I'd call that a weak jet sweep, truthfully. He'll make the sidelines and go out of bounds. Get a little bit of something out of nothing there. Wallace on the carry for the Grizzlies. Looks like they'll give him a couple of yards. Yeah, typically you see a warning for sideline infractions before the actual penalty. Ball now sitting on the 44-yard line. They'll get a couple out of that last play. Smith doing the signal calling, hands it off. Trying to get a little room. Looks like he'll give him a couple more yards. Grizzlies will be coming up third and about six. Scoreboard says five, we'll go with that. Big down here for the Grizzlies. They've had a couple of deep drives and then shot themselves in the foot with mistakes. Rolling to throw, 
No room, lots of time. Little dump pass will drop incomplete. Brawley, the intended receiver there. It's almost, uh, I'd call a sideline shuttle pass. Drops incomplete. Fourth down and the Grizzlies will punt with 2.13 left in the first quarter. Panthers will send a man back. He'll stand on his own 10 yard line. Good snap, no rush. Good high kick. It'll hit right at about the 12 yard line and take a sideline bounce. And looks like they're gonna probably mark it about the 11. We'll take a look and see. Yeah, ball will be marked at the 11 yard line and that's where the Panthers will take over. Hernandez on that punt, good high punt. Wouldn't say it turned over, but it definitely hung up there. Gave the Grizzly punt team time to get down and cover that one without a return. Caney Creek sends their offense. Mr. Aguilar back out onto the field. Three receivers on the far side, one on the near. He'll hand it off in the middle. Good hole out into the secondary. Still on his feet, up to around the 25-yard line. That'll move the chains and give him a fresh set of downs. Graves on the carry. And Stringer on the tackle for the Grizzlies. 155 and counting left in the first quarter. Hand off, looking for some room. Broke a tackle out to the 34th, ball on the ground. Now I take that back. I thought the ball had fought, dropped out, he had it. Graves again on the carry, gives him a, gives him a good, uh, looks like about a nine yard gain, we'll call it second and one. Montgomery on the tackle for the Grizzlies. Aguilar will go with that same three wide receiver on the far side, one on the near set. He'll hand it off, and he'll get enough for the first down, move the ball out to about the 36-yard line. That will move the chains and give the Panthers a fresh set of downs and keep their drive alive. Graves on the carry again for the Panthers. Moylan on the tackle. Aguilar awaiting the uh, sign for the play. Another handoff in the middle. He'll be hit hard at the line of scrimmage and taken down by number 44. That's about as perfect, picture perfect tackle as you can get. Lund on that hard hit at the line of scrimmage. No gain, second and 10. And we'll let the clock run out, and that will end the quarter. Yeah, that was pitcher perfect. Planted his face mask right in the uh, chest of the uh, bread basket of the uh, defender, or the runner, locked on, took him down. All right, so our score after one complete quarter of play is the Panthers 7, Grizzlies 0. I mentioned earlier it's halftime tonight for the Caney Creek Panthers. So they'll have their halftime activities going on during the uh, intermission. So far it's been a good game, close game, lots of mistakes. Only one touchdown so far, but one of those games where you see a lot of them all, a lot of both teams moving the ball well and then getting down close and shooting themselves in the foot. I mentioned the halftime for Caney Creek. Of course, Grand Oaks brought their band to drill teams, color guard. They will be performing first before the halftime activities. 
I'll have to check that, though. Sometimes the visiting band will perform after the halftime activities. I'll verify that. All right, Aguilar calling the signals. Looking toward the sidelines, looking down the middle of the field. And uh, looks like there was a mix up there on the patterns. Looked like more of a timing pattern, and uh, one of the receivers simply did not. Either he didn't run the correct pattern or Aguilar threw the wrong pass. Well, no way to tell, really. Third and ten. Looking to throw again, being pressured. Going to have to dump it out there. Ball will drop incomplete. No flags on the play. And like that, the Panther offense is running off the field, still running their kicking team out there. That had to have been one of the shortest drives of the night. Almost a three and out. He'll stand on his own 20-yard line. Grizzly send a couple of men back to receive. Good high kick, end over end. Be caught at the 30, 25 yard line, taken down around the 27 yard line. We'll see where they're gonna mark it. Looks like they'll give him to the 28. And that's where the Grizzlies will take over, trailing this one, seven to nothing. Just starting, just inside the uh, start of the second quarter. Vega on the kick, on the punt I should say, for the Panthers. Alexander on that reception. Nose of the ball sitting on the 28-yard line of the Grizzlies, and that's where they'll take over, trailing at 7 to nothing. They've been moving the ball, but mistakes, fumbles, have hurt them. Smith looking to the sideline, a little quick out pattern. He has it. He'll step out of bounds right at about the 35. They're going to give him the 34-yard line. That'll be a good six-yard gain out of that. Simon Smith on the reception for the Grizzlies. We'll call it second and four. I think first time we've seen that play tonight. Fake handoff, throw to the middle, a little look-in pattern. Still on his feet. Goes out of bounds around the 40-yard line. That'll be enough for the first down. They will mark him at the 40. That will move the chains, give him a fresh set of downs. Despain on the reception for the Grizzlies. They had him close to the first down marker, and then he eluded a couple of tacklers and was able to make toward the sideline and get a first down. Looking to throw, another quick out pattern. Goes out of bounds, we'll see where they're gonna mark him. Looks like they'll mark him right at about the 43 yard line. Cloud on the reception for the Grizzlies. We'll call it second and six. Smith, handoff in the middle, got his, still on his feet, breaking tackles, be taken down around the 45 yard line of the Panthers and that's where it'll be a first down. Wallace on the carry, good strong run by Wallace there, broke several tackles, made it into the secondary. Good, nice run there. Ball sitting on the 46, first and 10 for the Grizzlies, now inside Panther territory, trailing at seven to nothing. Handoff on his feet down to the 35, 32 yard line. Good hard run. That'll be enough to move the chains. It's been that kind of night for the Grizzlies. They've been moving the ball with authority and then they get down and make a mistake and hand the ball over. Wallace on the carry. Cook on the tackle for the Panthers. First and 10. Ball sitting on the Panther 33 yard line. 
Hard, hard count there. Handoff, nope, fake handoff. Breaking tackles in, in the secondary. Still on his feet, and he'll fall around the 35-yard line. He'll get, uh, looks like they're going to give him a couple of yards on nothing but pure effort. Bennett on the tackle for the Panthers. Second and eight. Grizzlies would definitely like to take this one down, tie this ball game up. Little high snap, handoff in the middle, got room down to the 25. Looks like that's where they'll mark him, right at the 25-yard line. Wallace on the carry for the Grizzlies. Third and two. Big down here for the Grizzlies. High snap again, he'll hand it off into the secondary all the way down to around the 18 yard line. That'll be plenty to move the chains. Wallace again on the carry for the Grizzlies. We'll have an official timeout. Looks like when we come back, the ball will be marked around the 19 yard line. Again, we appreciate you joining us tonight. The halftime performance will be homecoming for Caney Creek Panthers. Noticed a lot of girls during the pregame have their uh, Texas sized mums. With three girls, I know all about homecoming moms. One of my daughters said she thinks they're eventually going to get to the point where already they're so large, they hang them around their neck. She thought they were going to get so large, they're going to need a cart wagon to carry it. All right, here we go. Ball sitting at the 19. And... Free play for the Grizzlies here. Ball will be thrown out of bounds. Pretty sure that's going to be offsides against Caney Creek. We'll take a look here and wait and see. Offside. That is defense. our indication. Number 79, five-yard penalty, first down. That'll move the ball down to the 14-yard line where it'll be first and five for the Grizzlies. Again, trying to tie this game up. Trailing at seven to nothing with 8.54 left in the half. Grizzlies have had a couple of deep penetrations. But again, mistakes, turnovers hurt them. And that's a good hard loss there. Uh, 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 fake me. <laughs> even fake me. I think it faked even the uh, cameraman there. But it was such a great play, it faked the receiver. There was nobody out there to catch it. Second and five. Smith calling the signals. We have a whistle. False start. That'll be a false the start against the Grizzlies. We'll push it back. We'll replay penalty. second down, and it'll be second and 10. Like I mentioned earlier, the Grizzlies have moved the ball well. They just get down close inside the red zone, and the wheels come off. Three receivers on the near, one on the far. Looking to throw, looking to throw, being pressured. Got his man open in the end zone. Knocked down. Another example where the ball was thrown a little bit too late. It looks like we may have a flag on the play. Defense, 
I take that back. I thought the uh, line judge was indicating, trying to get the referee's attention. Third and 10, ball just hung up. It, was, it, it should have been thrown earlier. He was open, wide open, and the ball was just thrown a little late and gave the defender time to knock it down. Holm knocked it down. Looks like the same place, got his man, hit him in the hands and dropped. Ball thrown to around the five yard line, hit his receiver square in the hands. Good one, the intended receiver. Great pass thrown by Smith. That would have give them, given them first and goal at the five. Threw that one into a crowd, just over the hands of the corner, in front of the safety. Could not bring it in. They're going to go for it. Fourth down, ball on the 19. Smith looking to throw, got his man open in the middle. Almost intercepted. I think Smith may have telegraphed that one just a little bit too much. Gave that safety a good break on it. And again, the Grizzlies get down deep into Panther territory. And again, they come, come away without a score. Eight twenty-one left in the half. Panthers sending their offense back out, back out onto the field, and I know they would enjoy the opportunity to extend their seven to nothing lead. Plenty of time left in the court in the half to do so. Hand off on a little jet sweep, and he'll be taken down after a short gain. Looks like they're going to give him a couple out of it. Bennett on the carry. We do have a penalty flag on the play. Looking for an indication. Looks like they're going to mark it off against Caney Creek. Holding on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat first down. And there's our indication holding against Caney Creek. Half the distance, put the ball back on the 10 yard line. Repeat the down, first and 20. A lot of mistakes plaguing both of these teams tonight. Aguilar going to be a quarterback keeper. He'll be hit behind the line of scrimmage and taken down by number eight. Outstanding sack play there. Ramos on the uh, sack. Read that one like a storybook. That'll put the ball way back on the six-yard line where it's now second and 20 23. Changing the play here, looking to throw. Hit a defender square in the hands and couldn't come up with it. Number 42, I wouldn't call it a, it was a knockdown, but Hernandez on that play, hit him square in the numbers. That's one he'll probably be thinking about tonight. Third and 23. Looking to throw, looking to throw. Going to throw deep down the middle. And almost intercepted again. Threw that one into a crowd. He had two receivers. Aguilar had two receivers right there together. Of course, that's going to draw a crowd anytime you do that. Looking to see if we have a penalty flag on the field. Yeah, I think there may be one. We see something on the field. I don't know if it's a penalty flag or somebody lost a shoe or. Huh. 
Pass interference on the defense, number one. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. There we go, first a uh, pass interference call against the Grizzlies. Will give Caney Creek new life in a first down, fresh set of downs. Move the ball out to the 21 yard line. Did not give them the yardage for a first down, but by being the personal foul aspect, it gives them the automatic first down. Ball sitting on their own 21 yard line. Now they have new life. Ball over the head, he's looking for it, looking for it. Ball on the ground. Grizzlies indicating they have it and they do. That looked like one of those plays. Uh, Aguilar couldn't find the ball. It, it reminds you of one of those plays in baseball where the ball gets past the catcher and it's standing, laying right down at his feet and for some reason he can't see it. Please reset the game clock to 6.59. Please reset the game clock to 6.59. Thank you. Grizzlies march their offense back out on the field. Grant Smith again calling the signals. They'll see if they can put it in the end zone this time. Little handoff in the middle, plenty of room. Good blocking there, still on his feet. Now it turns into a scrum and he'll be taken off his feet. Let's see where they're gonna mark him. Looks like they're gonna mark him right at about the seven yard line. Wallace on the carry, that'll be second and goal for the Grizzlies. Mendez on the tackle for Caney Creek. Panthers have been able to keep them out of the end zone up to this point. Another handoff looking for some room. Hit hard at the line, at the goal line. Did he make it in? Yes, the indication is a touchdown. Very hard hit there at the end zone. And we're one kick away from a tie ball game. Jinks doing the kicking for the Grizzlies. Ball down, kick up. And it is good. So with 6.24 left in the half, we've got a tie ball game. I have to admit, I go back to that play. I don't think I've ever seen a play where the quarterback Look like a catcher trying to find a ball when it's right down at his feet. And of course, that's not belittling the quarterback in any shape or form. I think in both of those cases, though, sometimes the catcher has his face mask on, headgear. In this case, quarterback's got his headgear on and probably just doesn't see the ball or, or is looking for it further away than it really is. One thing is for sure, the Grizzly uh, defenders saw the ball. Ellis and Palmer back to receive for the Panthers. Low kick. Squig kick almost, picked up at the 18. Still on his feet and taken off his feet right at about the 22 yard line. We'll see where they're gonna mark him. Palmer on the return for the Panthers. They're trying to check the number on that. that no, Waltz, the uh, kicker. We had two different uh, rosters we were using tonight and uh, couldn't find that 37 and we were able to locate him on our roster. Panthers will take over on their own 22 yard line. Tie ball game. First and 10.
three receivers on the uh, near side on his right. He'll hand it off in the middle. He'll be hit at the line of scrimmage and taken off his feet. Looks like he might get a yard out of it. We'll see where they mark him. Graves on the carry for the Panthers. Looks like it's going to be no gain. Second and 10. Thompson on the tackle for the Grizzlies. Well, we mentioned two close uh, teams close in strength, and that is exactly what it's shown, demonstrated so far. 546 and counting in the half. Aguilar looking to throw. Will look in pass. Got his receiver out to around the 28-yard line. He'll be short of the first down, but he'll get a few out of it. Bennett on the reception. Looks like it's going to be about third and five. Half has gone fairly quickly. Aguilar with three receivers on his left, one on his right. Hand off in the middle, big hole. Right up straight the middle, still on his feet, 50. Take it off his feet at the 45 yard line. Good strong run there. Excellent blocking by the Panther front. Graves on that carry. Carr on the, uh, I would call that almost a touchdown saving tackle by the Grizzlies. First and 10, ball at the Grizzly 45 yard line. I think that last series and score by the Grizzlies may have woke up the Panther offense. Three receivers on his right, one on his left, single back. He'll hand it off, get about four out of the play. We'll see where they're going to mark him. Looks like they'll mark him right at the 40-yard line. Graves on the carry. He's been the workhorse for him tonight. We'll call it second and five. Tang on the tackle for the Grizzlies. 408 and counting left in the half. Sure, the Panthers are not in any hurry here. They'd love to get down there and score and leave little time, little or no time left on the clock. 355 and counting is a good measure for that. Hand off in the middle. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Looks like they're going to give him maybe a couple. Let's see. Yeah, they'll give him a couple. Be it, make it third and three. Graves again on the carry. Moylan on the tackle for the Grizzlies. Clock continues to want, run with 322 left. Panthers not in any hurry here. Looks like maybe a broken play. Aguilar will keep it and make enough for the first down. Looks like, uh, I don't think that was an option play. It looked like maybe he watched his receiver or his back go past him a little bit, and I think they uh, could have been a quarterback keeper by design. Any, whatever the case, first down. Ball now sitting on the 35-yard line of the Grizzlies, first and 10 for the Panthers trying to get ahead and trying to make a go-ahead score. Bands in the end zone preparing for their halftime show. It looks like the Grand Oaks Grizzly Band. Hand off in the middle, hit behind the line of scrimmage and taken down for a loss. Graves on the carry. Ramos on the tackle for the Grizzlies. Grand Oaks. And with that, Grand Oaks First will call a timeout. 2.30 left in the half. When we come back, the Panthers will be looking at second and tw 12. Been a very entertaining game up, game up to this point. A lot of mistakes, but some big plays as well.
Again, both of these teams, game, teams came into tonight's contest with an 0-1 record in the district. Trying to change that. Grand Oaks has an overall 0-3 record, so they're definitely trying to get things back on track. Second and 12. Little toss out. Option play. Ball on the ground. And I believe Grand Oaks has it. Good hard hit there. Well-designed play. Option pass. Tossed it out. Caught it. And then got hit hard. Ball on the ground. Moylan on the tackle. Correction, Moylan on that toss out. He had enough for the first down. Then hit hard. Moylan on the run. Correction, Moylan on the recovery. I did not catch the number of the player that made the hit, but it was a good, strong hit. All right. Smith back out on the field. Three receivers on his right. Going back to pass. Going to throw a quick sideline pattern. Looks like they're going to give him a good uh, tip, uh, uh, tip toe catch. Cloud on the reception. That will move the ball out to the 35-yard line. Good eight-yard gain there by the Grizzlies call it second and three. Same play, different sideline. Still on his feet, trying to get some yardage. Looks like they may give him one. It'll be third and one, it looks like. Alexander on that reception and run. Now we're going to call it third and two again. 2-11 left in the contest, or I should say in the first half. A little quick side in pass on his feet, down to the 50, still on his feet. Now it's a foot race. Trying to elude tacklers, and he'll be taken down from behind at around the 26-yard line of Caney Creek. Despain on that reception and run. Outstanding run there. Caught the ball. Eluded tacklers. Made it to the sideline. Turned into a foot race, and they brought him down right at about the 25-yard line. First and 10 Grizzlies. Now the Grizzlies trying to get a touchdown to go ahead in this game. Rolling left, and pass was just a little high. Despain, the uh, intended receiver there. Do we have a penalty? Nope. I think that's just a towel laying on the field. Second and 10. Looking to throw, looking to throw. All kinds of time. Now he's being pressured. Still on his feet. Still on his feet looking for someone to throw, and he'll just throw it out of bounds. Couldn't find an active receiver, or I should say an open receiver. It'll be third and 10 with 132 left in the half. Smith with two receivers on each side, a single back. Looking to throw, throw to the sidelines, got his man open, out of bounds, right at the down marker. Let's see where they're gonna mark him. Yes, indication first down. Outstanding pass. That was one of those catches where you go up and catch it with your hands. Good one on that reception. You like to see that ball was thrown where only he could catch it. Went up with his hands, grabbed it, brought it down, made the first down. Ball now sitting on the 15-yard line. 127 left in the half. He'll throw on a little lookout, look-in pattern, looking for an indication. Incomplete. Despain, the intended receiver there. Did his best to go down and catch it. A 
Again, now the Grizzlies would like to take some momentum into the end zone at halftime and lead this one. If they can score. Got his receiver open in the back of the end zone and overshot him. Third and 10. 115 left in the first half. Again, I encourage you to hang around for our halftime performances. It is Caney Creek homecoming. They will be crowning their court. Third and 10. Man in motion. Looking to throw. Look off one receiver. Throw out into the flat. Bounce off his hands. Looked like number four there was kind of looking at the uh, at uh, Smith saying, I wasn't expecting that. I think Cloud, the intended receiver there. And the Grizzly off it, uh, kicking team comes out onto the field. Looks like they're going to try to get a little, at least a little more momentum in taken with them into the uh, into the locker room at halftime. Jinx out to attempt a, what looks like it's going to be a 32-yard field goal. Got plenty of foot. And it is good. Good 32-yarder there by Jinx. Puts the uh, Grizzlies out in front. 10-7 to seven with 105 left. As I mentioned earlier, perfect night for football. It's not cool, but when it's been 100 degrees, I would call it cool. First two games of the season were pushed back to an 8 p.m. kickoff because of the uh, temperatures. Actually, I think the first three games of the season were pushed back to an 8, 8 o'clock kickoffs. This is our first 7 p.m. kickoff of the season. Looks like the bands have their normal attire on tonight. That's a pretty good indication that it's not as hot when the bands can dress out in their normal outfits. Ellis and Palmer back to receive for the Panthers. Waltz doing the kicking for the Grizzlies. Low end over end kick, fielded quickly at the 15, 25. Still on his feet, taken off his feet right at the 30-yard line with 59 seconds left. Palmer on that carry. Looks like about a 20-yard return. Ball will be marked right at the 30. Panthers have one second short of a minute to perhaps get down the field, maybe get a field goal, tie it back up. Looking to throw, looking to throw, being pressured. Looks like he threw it up for grabs. The ball will hit the field. Drop in complete. Second and 10, 53 seconds left in the half. Aguilar with three receivers on his right. Looking to throw, looking to throw. Throwing deep down the sideline and his receiver looking for a flag. There will be none. Looks like he got held up there a little bit. Ellis, the intended receiver. 
I believe that was a situation where the official saw that as an incidental contact. Make it third and 10. Hand off in the middle. Be no gain. Looks like Caney Creek is probably going to try to run the clock out, out of this one. Grand Oaks. Second Grand Oaks will call timeout, half. try to preserve a little bit of that clock before the end of the half. Ellis on the carry for Caney Creek. Ramos on the tackle for the Grizzlies. Forty-three seconds left in the half. Grizzly return team may be talking about having, uh, trying to get in a big return here. They're going to send the Grizzlies will send a couple of men back to receive. Frazier, Frazier and Alexander back to receive for the Grizzlies, leading this one 10 to 7 with 43 seconds left in the, in the half. No rush. Yeah, they've got the, not a very good kick. Caught at the 45, still on his feet, trying to find some open room. Will not find much, but get the ball inside Grizz, uh, Panther territory right at about the 49-yard line, and that's where the Grizzlies will have 29 seconds to see if they can put some more points on the board. Frazier on the reception and carry there. Looks like they're going to mark it right at the 49-yard line of the Panthers, and that's where the Grizzlies will take over, leading this one 10 to 7. I know the Grizzlies would like to get maybe a couple of passes here, get the ball maybe down into... Uh, field goal range at least, maybe break one open for a touchdown. Panthers, on the other hand, trying to make sure that they keep them out of the end zone and don't give up the big play. Little look-in pass thrown behind him, and it will go incomplete. Alexander, the intended receiver there. Smith, a little errant with that pass, threw it behind him. Second and 10. Hand off in the middle, big hole on his feet down to the 40, 35, taking off his feet right at about the 35, 36 yard line. That'll move the chains. 19 seconds left in the game, or in the half. Wallace on that long run there. Para on the tackle for the Panthers. I wouldn't say they're in field goal range yet. Clock now running. Quick sideline pattern, and it will be incomplete. Despain, the intended receiver there, looked like he did his it's best. To pass, second down. Looked like he did his best to catch the ball and keep his feet in, in bounds, but I think he did, uh, he, I think he caught the ball. Don't see the replay. I think he caught the ball, but he couldn't keep his feet down. Second and 10. Put a man in motion, looking to throw. This may be the final game play of the game, looking to throw, going to throw toward the end zone, caught right at about the 18-yard line, but time has expired. Cloud, the intended receiver there for the Grizzlies. Well, we told you we thought we have, would have a close one, and we do. After two complete quarters of play, do we have a penalty on the play? Time has expired. There's no foul on the, for the quarterback past the line of scrimmage. That's the end of the half. 
All right, I think you may have heard that. They thought the uh, Smith may have gone past the line of scrimmage and thrown the ball, but evidently not. They wave it off, and teams will return to their dressing rooms. Our score, 10 to 7. Grizzlies leading this one. Again, it's homecoming for the Panthers tonight. Appreciate you hanging around for the halftime performance tonight. These kids work hard during the hot summers, just like the football teams do, to prepare for their halftime performance. Color guard, drill team. I believe it's going to be the Grand Oaks band that will be performing first. Keeney Creek, again, being halftime, will come uh, afterwards. We're going to uh, go to our field mic, see if we can capture much of the audio for your listening pleasure. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the field the Grand Oaks High School Royal Pride Drill Team. The Royal Pride Social Officers are Lexi Abels, Abel Ava DeVille, Madeline Guajardo, Addison Hickey, Claire Hogan, Vice President Nicole Wong, and President Maddie Brown. The Royal Prize Sergeants are Sam Biondo, Sydney Biondo, Risa Giefer, Amy Pannones, Kenley Provo, and Alana Walton. Spirit Girl of the Week is Angelina Serta. Dancer of the Week is Jera O'Farrell. Faculty Member of the Week is Jacette Castro. The Royal Pride Dance Officers are Lieutenant Reese Garza, Lieutenant Maddie Melcher, Senior Lieutenant Faith Boudreau, First Lieutenant Maddie Escobel, and Captain Alexa Minor. The Royal Pride Drill Team is under the direction of Hannah Gassett and Catherine Prather. We hope you enjoy their kick routine too. Give me everything.
And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Please welcome to the field, the Grand Oaks High School Grizzly Marching Band. The Grand Oaks High School Marching Band is under the direction of Mike Flake, Jessica Calvert, Percussion Director Jacob Perales, Color Guard Director Trace Brown, and Twirling Coach Sue Young. The band is under the field direction of Head Drum Major Alice DeMauro, Senior Drum Major Caitlin Faddis, Senior Drum Major Sean Ferrara, and Junior Drum Major Emma Stone. The Color Guard is under the leadership of Captains Haley Garcia, Liana Ramos, and Gabrielle Clark. The Grand Oaks Grizzly Twirler is the Texas State Champion Twirler, Emma Matei. This evening, the band will perform the first two movements of their 2023 production, Pearlescent. We hope you enjoy.
The Grizzly Band section of the week is the clarinets. Band member of the week is Nathan Green. Freshman of the week is Marissa Stern. Guard member of the week is Malia Sylvester. Percussion member of the week is Fiona Monreal.
Congratulations to the 2023 Caney Creek Homecoming Canon, King and Queen, King Edgar Barrientos, Crystal and Queen, Crystal and Greta Alonso, Alonso, Again, congratulations to the King and Queen. Grizzlies come back out on the field, leading this one 10 to 7. Panthers are in their tunnel, and here they come. Great halftime performance by both bands, drill teams. Color guard. If I remember correctly, Caney Creek won the initial toss and chose to receive. is not disappointed, that's for sure. 10 to seven at half, or as we start the third quarter. I believe this is gonna be a game where the team that wins will be the last team that scores. was correct earlier. Caney Creek is sending out their kicking team. Absolutely no win tonight. Not going to be a factor in the kicking and punting game. The 
Benitez kicking. Left-handed, left-footed kicker. Kicks it deep. Will not go in the end zone. That's a live ball picked up at the two-yard line. On his, well, on, got some room up to the 25, 26-yard line. I think the, uh, in that particular case there, it looked like the kicking team thought the ball was gonna go into the end zone as much as the receiving team. It never did. Frazier picked it up, scampered up to the 20, let's see where they're gonna mark him, 26 yard line. Almost broke that one open. Again, I think because of the Caney Creek kick, kicking team was thinking the ball was gonna go into the end zone. Outstanding kick there to get it to die like that at the two yard line. Little look in pass, got his receiver up to the 35, 36. Uh, looks like he's gonna make it close to the 40. We'll see where they mark it. It'll be enough for the first down. Now let's look at the spot. Do we have a penalty on the play? Can't see any flags. Illegal man downfield. Yeah, there was on a the flag offense, on the play. Illegal man downfield. Five yard penalty. Repeat, first down. And the offensive lineman went a little bit, bit too far beyond the line of scrimmage. Got caught. What would have been a first down will now be a first and 15. You don't see that called too much in high school football. I'll just be honest with you. Especially on a pass play that developed so quickly. You, you, it's more common in plays where the uh, longer developing play. Ball taken out to run. It looks like it's going to be close to the original line of scrimmage. Wallace on the carry. Mendez on the tackle for the Panthers. What I was going to say, the quarterback didn't have the ball very long for the lineman to get that far downfield, I don't believe. Second and nine. Little handoff, looking for some room. He'll get maybe a yard or two out of it. Looks like they're going to give him about a yard. It'll be third and nine, or third and eight. We'll call it third and eight. Wallace on the carry for the Grizzlies. Looks like that Panther defense is stiffening a little bit from what their first half performance. Smith calling the signals. And the quarterback keeper still on his feet. Good open field tackle there. He's going to be short of the first down. Mendez on the tackle. And Grand Oaks will send their punting team out onto the field. Looks like Caney Creek is going to send out number eight to receive. Correction, Daryl Ellis, number six, out to receive. Again, no win tonight. Not going to be a factor in the punt. Hernandez kicks the ball. Good kick, good kick. It'll Caught right at the 30-yard line up to the 35. Hit hard right at the 39-yard line and a good open field hit by number 23. Darnell Frazier on that tackle, good open field tackle. Ellis on the reception and re on the return, and reception and return. That's where uh, Caney Creek will take over, trailing this one 10 to seven on their own 38-yard line. Good defensive stand there by the Panthers. Aguilar handoff in the middle. He'll be hitting the line of, scrum line of scrimmage. Breaks tackles, makes it to the sideline. Taking off his feet right at the 45 yard line. Good six yard run on a first down carry. Graves on the carry. We'll call it second and four. Good hard run there by Graves. Broke a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Scampered up the sideline. Little toss out pass. 
hit behind the line of scrimmage. Again, eluding tacklers and hit hard by number 18. Good, hard, open field tackle there. DeGeorge on that tackle. It'll be a third down, no gain on the play. Now it looks like they're gonna give him a couple. We'll call it four, third and one. Ball now sitting on the Panther 47 yard line. He'll hand it off in the middle, grab behind the line of scrimmage, broke that tackle. I think he got enough for the first down, they'll move the chains, looking for the indication. Graves on the carry. Gonna be close, haven't got an indication yet. They give him a first down, and that will move the chains. Fresh set of downs for the Panthers. Ball now sitting at the Panther 48-yard line, first and 10, trailing at 10 to seven with 8.40 left in the third quarter. Three receivers on his left. He'll hand it off, looking for some room, hit at the line of scrimmage, breaking a couple of tackles, still on his, still on his feet, taking off up around about the 45-yard line of the Grizzlies. Be short of the first down, but a good five-yard run. Graves on the carry. Moylan on the tackle for the Grizzlies. We'll give him six out of it. Call it second and four. Three receivers on his right. Looks like a ground ball on the ground. Like a bad snap. And the Grizzlies have it. Hughes on the recovery there for the Grizzlies. Panthers had some momentum. And again, the mistake bug comes back and bites them. that ball ever got to Aguilar. We'll see if the Grizzlies can take advantage of that break. Ball sitting on their own 47 yard line. They lead it 10 to seven. Hand off in the middle. He'll get a couple out of it. Angel, the carrier for Caney Creek. Correction, Sepulveda on the carry. Angel Sepulveda. Another handoff in the middle, good hole. He'll get enough of the first down, carry the ball down to the 42 yard line of, the, of Caney Creek. That will move the chains, give the Grizzlies a fresh set of downs. Sepulveda again on the carry. Fake handoff into the secondary, still on his feet, down to around the 28 yard line. Good hard run there by Smith. Enough to move the chains, keep the drive alive. McMillan on the tackle for the Panthers. Looks like the uh, Grizzlies are kind of going to a little bit of a more hurry up offense here. Ball sitting on the Panther 29. Handoff, we have an early whistle. False start. On the offense, number 33, five yard penalty, first down. False start against the Grizzlies. Uh, that hurry up offense caught one of the players a little off guard there, a little bit too eager. The first and 10, ball now sitting on the 39 yard line of the Panthers. Little handoff in the middle, breaking a couple of tackles. Looks like he'll be close to the original line of scrimmage. We'll see where they're gonna mark him. 
Looks like they will mark him right at the original line of scrimmage, right at about the 29-yard line. Sepulveda on the carry for the Grizzlies. We'll call it second and 10. Grizzlies looking to pad their lead. Both of these teams have done very well getting down into the other team's, uh, their opponent's ter uh, territory and then let the wheels come off. Hand off. We'll see where they mark it. If he got anything, it's not much. We're gonna call it third and 10. Panther defense stiffening here. Looking to throw, looking to throw, looking to the corner of the end zone. Found a man wide open in the middle of the field, taking off his feet down around the 16 yard line. He'll be enough to move the chains. And like that, the Grizzly offense has uh, kept their drive alive. Good play there by Smith. Couldn't, he was looking to the uh, corner of the end zone at first, couldn't find his receiver and then looked, uh, looked him off. Caught his tight end right in the middle of the field. Good one on the reception. First and 10 for the Grizzlies. Now the ball at their own 17 yard line. Hand off in the middle, got room. Still on his feet, down to the five, trying to pull his few defenders with him. That will be enough to make it first and goal for the Grizzlies. Ball now gonna be marked right at the four yard line. It'll be first and goal, quick, Hurry up offense here by the Grizzlies. Wallace on that last carry, hit behind the line of scrimmage. Number three taken off his feet. Tackle by Graves on the carry, Wallace on the carry again. Yeah, the Grizzlies went to that hurry up offense and uh, Panthers were quite ready for it. Second and goal, two yard loss. Quarterback keeper gonna try to race to the end of the corner of the end zone, will not make it. Smith will be taken off his feet back at around the eight yard line. Look like they maybe marked him at the seven. Lost his footing right there. Panther defense trying desperately to keep them out of the end zone. Third and goal. Looking for a receiver, looking for a receiver. Still can't find one, and he'll throw it out of bounds. Receiver in the, ter in the area, so there was no intentional grounding. I believe he was outside of the tackle anyway. and we have an official timeout. That will leave the Grizzlies fourth and goal at their own seven yard line, leading this one 10 to seven. I expect they'll be sending out their uh, field goal team, kicking team. been the kind of game so far where a field goal may very well be all that you need to win it. That will be the call. Jinx doing the kicking. Looks like it'll be about a 24 yard field goal attempt when we get everyone lined up. He'll be kicking from his left hash mark, which will be good being a right footed kicker. Ball down. Looks like it was a fake by design and it will fail. 
Good outstanding play there by the Panthers. Look at that replay, but, replay, but I believe that was a intentional fake. No, I take that back. He dropped this. It was a bad snap. It was a bad snap. Frazier was the holder there. Tristan Frazier doing the holding. And knew that he could not get the ball down in time or placed down in time. Decided to take it and run. Caney Creek defenders were able to bring him down and the score averted. So we stay at 10 to seven with 3.05 left in the third quarter. Hand off, nowhere to go, trying to get through, he will not. Looks like the line judge will give him the original line of scrimmage. We'll call it second and 10. Ellis, the uh, rusher there. That was a little bit of a high snap that the uh, on that field goal attempt. But I think the uh, Holder just could not get it down in time. Looking to throw. Throw to the sideline. Had two receivers in the same spot. Ball drops incomplete. Coon, the intended receiver. Two in the area at the time, so we're really not sure who he was throwing to. Third down play here. Aguilar looking to throw, looking to throw, throw it out in the flat. He'll be hit close to the line of scrimmage, trying to elude tacklers. Looks like he'll lose yardage on the play. Put the ball back about the nine yard line. That'll be a, Caney Creek will send out their punting team. Lund making the tackle there for the Grizzlies. Here, I'm sure we're going to see the Caney Creek punter probably standing near the back of the end zone. Vega doing the punting for Caney Creek. Counting the number of people on the field, make sure he's got the right number of people on the field. And the clock will run out. Timeout. Uh, correction. Caney Time Creek. Out. Caney Creek First coaches noticed that 25 half. second clock was about to expire and quickly called a timeout. I think Vega was trying to make sure he had enough players on the field, the right number of players on the field. A little preoccupied with that. Coaches recognize that 25 second clock about to expire and quickly called the timeout to avoid a five yard penalty, which would have put him at the back of the end zone to punt. I believe that's still Vega back there kicking. Good snap, good kick. Be fielded with ball on the ground. Ball still on the ground, picked up. Grizzlies uh, darted a uh, little bit of a disaster there. The ball was not fielded, did not, fair catch was not called. The ball was not fielded cleanly. Carr was able to pick that ball up and uh, Save that for the Grizzlies. They'll take over on the 35 yard line of Caney Creek, leading at 10 to seven with 121 left in the third quarter. Still a very tight game. Smith with two receivers on his right, one on his left, single back. He'll 
hand it off. Get a couple of yards out of the play, maybe three or four. We'll see where they're gonna mark it. Looks like they're gonna mark it right at about the 32 yard line. We'll give him three out of it. We'll call it second and seven. Wallace on the carry for the Grizzlies. Cook on the tackle for the Panthers. Again, both teams trying to get their first district win of the year tonight. Another handoff, good hole into the secondary, still on his feet, still on his feet, down to the 15 yard line. Good strong run there, about a 13 yard scamper. Wallace again on that carry. Jackson on the tackle for the Grizzlies, almost a, I should say by the Panthers, almost a touchdown saving tackle. First and 10. Looking to throw, looking to throw, gonna throw to the sideline, overshot his receiver. Number four, the intended receiver. Cloud, the intended receiver for the Grizzlies. Second and 10. They can get a first down, the ball sitting on the 15 yard line. Handoff, looking for some room. He'll get a few yards out of it. We'll call it third, looks like it's gonna be about third to about six. Wallace again on the carry for the Grizzlies. Garza on the tackle for the Panthers. Looking to throw, gonna throw a corner pattern way over his intended, the intended receiver's head. And fourth down. In the third quarter. Into the third quarter. And that will end our third quarter. So our score after three complete quarters of play, Grizzlies 10, New Caney 7. Correction, Caney Creek. Jinx on the kick, and it is good. So with 11.55 left in the game, the Grand Oaks Grizzlies extend their lead by three. New score, Grizzlies 13, Panthers seven. I stand corrected. My spotter just corrected me. Yes, that is true. That is Chicago. That's not blood, sweat, and tears. That's 25 or, 25 or six to four, yeah, boy. My apologies. But I will say nothing was better from a high school band back in those days than the Cretia McEagle, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Thank you, uh, Caney Creek Band, for that performance. Even if I did get it wrong initially. But that was a good song back in the day. Caney Creek, by any means, is not out of this one for sure. A quick touchdown, and they're back in back in the or in the lead. Yep. 
Ellison Palmer back to receive for Caney Creek. Waltz about to kick the ball. Short kick, hit the ground right at about the 22. Be picked up around the 12, looking for some room. Still on his feet, still on his feet. Taken off his feet right at the 30 yard line. No flags on the play that I can see. Palmer on the re uh, reception and run back. Looks like he got about 20 out of it. And that's where Caney Creek will take over trailing this one 13 to seven with 11.49 left in the game. He'll mark it right at the 31 yard line. Grizzlies nursing that six point lead. Three receivers on his right, one on his left. Aguilar goes back to throw, little look in pass, hit right at the line of scrimmage. He looks like he'll maybe lose a couple. Looks like they're going to mark him for about a three-yard loss on the play. That'll make it second and 13. Hernandez on the tackle there by the Grizzlies. Three receivers on his left, one on his right. Looking to throw, looking to throw. And almost intercepted. Looks like Aguilar had one pattern in mind and his receiver had a different one. The George almost there with the interception. The receiver looked like he was running an out and go. Aguilar was throwing an out pattern. Third and 12. 11, 12 left in the game. And we have a timeout. Timeout, Caney Creek, second timeout of the half. Again, our congratulations to the Caney Creek King and Queen, the uh, homecoming King and Queen for 2023. Edgar Barrientos and Crystal Heredia Elizondo. glad you corrected me earlier on that. Chicago 25 or 6 to 4. They were one of my favorite groups back in the day. Third and 12. Aguilera looking to throw, looking to throw, being pressured. Got his open receiver open in the middle of the field and threw it a little bit behind him. It'll be fourth and a punting down for the Panthers. Bennett, the intended receiver. Panthers will send out their punting team. Grizzlies have a couple of men back to receive. Vega again doing the punting for the Panthers. Done a pretty good job tonight. Had to rush this one. Low hit, low kick. Not fielded very cleanly. He caught it on the bounce. Number nine there on the reception. Frazier on that re, uh, punt reception and uh, jumping on the ball after uh, not being able to field it cleanly. Looks like they're going to mark the ball right at the 30-yard line. That's where the Grizzlies will take over, nursing a six-point lead 
with 10.59 left in the contest. Now they're going to mark it back up to 28. Grizzlies will see if they can work out on the work on that clock at this point. Smith in the shotgun. Two receivers on his right, one on his left. Trying to do a hard count here. He'll hand it off. He'll be hit at the line of scrimmage. Get a few out of it. Looks like they'll give him about three, maybe four out of the play. It'll call, call it second down and six. Wallace on the carry again. He's been their workhorse on the ground. Again, both of these teams looking for their first district win. Grizzlies looking for their first win of the season. A little quick out pattern there, hit his receiver in the hands and he dropped it. Third and six. Now that one I know, Sweet Caroline. Get the thumbs up from my spotter. I wonder if the crowd is singing along with him. Hand off, good defensive play there by the Panthers. Smelled that one out. Looks like he'll lose a yard, bring out the punting team for the Grizzlies. Garza on the tackle for the Panthers. Good snap, good high kick, bombed it. Fair catch signaled. It'll take a grizzly bounce, go all the way down to the 16 yard line. That looked like about a 65 yard kick. I can't do the math in my head that quick. That looked like about, about a 60 yard kick. Hernandez, Hernandez on that punt, he booted it. NFL teams would like to have that kick. Caney Creek, first and 10 on their own 17 yard line. High snap, handoff, hit at the line of scrimmage. Trying to stay on his feet, push, push, keeps those feet moving. He'll get the ball out to about the 22 yard line. Graves on the carry for Panthers. That was a good hard, I'll call it the six yard run. First down run. We'll call it second and four. off in the middle another hard run he'll make, get enough to make the first down that will move the chains graves again on the carry kind of game where it gets late in the game and it's a matter of conditioning and who wants it more i know the panthers would love to take this ball down the field Put it in the end zone, kick an extra point, take the lead. Hand off again, and nowhere to go there. Graves again on the carry for the Panthers. He'll get a couple out of it. We'll call it second and eight. playing a lot of music in this final quarter. Looking to throw, looking to throw. 
be taken off his feet and brought down for a loss back around the 25 yard line. It looks like we're gonna mark it. Looks like they'll mark it at the 24. He'll lose about eight out of that play. Simpala taking uh, getting credit for the tackle on that one. Give him a sack in his distance. Call it third and 14. Panthers had a little bit of momentum going there, and then the Grizzlies came in and snatched it away. Third and 14. Looking to throw. Got his receiver open in the middle, hit him in the arms, and the ball will drop incomplete. That was one of those plays where the receiver, rather than trying to catch it with his hands, was trying to bring it into his body, and the uh, ball drops to the ground incomplete. Bennett, the intended receiver there for Caney Creek, and they'll have to punt. Grizzlies will send a couple of receivers back. 7.03 left in the game. Rushes kick, not a very good kick, end over end kick. He'll hit right at, did he hit a receiver? Or hit a, uh, a lot of, lot of bodies around that ball. No indication, looks like it'll be uh, marked down at the 41 yard line. Looking for the receiver, or the uh, officials to place the ball. I think they're gonna mark it at the 41. That's where the Grizzlies will take over, leading this one. Six-point lead, 13 to seven. Now they're gonna mark it at the 42. That's where Smith and his offense will take over. See if they can work on that clock, clock running. 6.51, no, clock uh, stopped. Smith looking to throw, throw out into the flat, got his receiver. Break a couple of tackles, or elude a couple of tacklers, get on out there. But looks like he was going to get about a five-yard gain out of that. Good gain on the first down play. Wallace on that reception and scamper. They're going to mark it now at the 46-yard line. We'll call it second, and uh, scoreboard says six. We'll go with it. Holmes on the tackle for Caney Creek. Now it's a matter of who wants it more. 6-19 in counting left in the game. Little handoff. Break into the secondary, get the ball all the way down to the Caney Creek 30, 42 yard line. Now they're gonna mark him out of bounds at about the 44. Wallace on the carry, Holmes on the tackle. Grizzlies again trying to go to their hurry up offense here a little bit, plenty of time, just trying to uh, not give the defense time to set. Hand off in the middle, got some room. Taken down hard, right at the 41, 42 yard line. Get a couple out of it. D DJ Garza on the tackle, Wallace on the carry. We'll call it second and eight. 544 and counting left in the game. Handoff, looting tacklers. He'll get first down yardage out of it, take the ball all the way down to the 31 yard line. That will move the chains. Wallace again on the carry. First and 10, ball sitting on the 31 yard line of the Panthers. Looking to throw, quick out pattern, threw it a little bit in front of the receiver. I should say behind the receiver. Ball will hit the ground, go incomplete. We'll look at second and 10, 5.07. That'll stop the clock with 5.07 left in the game. I think Smith may have been looking for a little bit of a roughing the passer flag there. 
second ten. And in motion. Hand off, got a hole. Still on his feet, take it down to the 25 yard line. He'll be short of the first down, but a good second yard run. Bennett on the tackle. Caney Creek trying to get some replacements in quickly. We'll call it third and four. Big down here for the Grizzlies and the Panthers for that matter. He'll throw out in the flat, got his receiver down to the 30, or 25 I should say. He's gonna be short of the first down decision time for the Grizzlies. Looks like he's gonna be about a yard short. We'll call it fourth and one. Wallace on the carry. Jackson on the tackle. I do not see a kicking team, a field goal team coming out on the field for the Grizzlies. Looks like they're gonna be going for it. We're gonna call it fourth and two. This is gonna be a pivotal game. Three, four minutes, actually under inside of four minutes now. Grizzlies in no hurry, leading it by six. And looks like they're gonna call a timeout. Timeout, Grand Oaks, first timeout of the half. Thankfully, we had that 7 p.m. kickoff tonight, so people will not be hitting the exits as late as they have been the past three weeks with those 8 p.m. start times. Credit to these bands, I think they have been playing continuously since the start of the fourth quarter. Appreciate you joining us tonight on the Conroe ISD Athletics YouTube channel. Appreciate our sponsors who make these games possible. Fourth and two. Pivotal play right here. Handoff in the middle. And I don't think he got it. Good defensive stand there by Caney Creek. They're jumping up and down, and yes, Grizzlies will send their defense out on the field. 340 left in the game. Ball goes over on downs. Caney Creek will take over. An opportunity here, perhaps, to turn the tide and bring home a big homecoming win. Spurl on the tackle there by the Panthers. Panthers do have one win under their belt this year. Grizzlies are 0-3. And off, looking for some room. Won't find much. They might give him a yard. Graves on the run for the Panthers. Looks like about a one, one yard is exactly what they're going to give him. We'll call it second and nine. Looking to throw, looking to throw. Guys receiver open in the flat, hit immediately. George on that uh, broke up that pass. We have an official timeout.
It'll be third and nine for the Panthers. Big down here for the Panthers. Looking to throw. And he just threw it up. Ball will drop in complete. Fourth down for the Panthers. I do not see their punting team coming out on the field. No timeout. Yeah, I think they're going to call a timeout now. Five second clock is about to expire. Looks like they're going to take the penalty and perhaps delay the game on it. the offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. That'll move them back, put the ball at the 19 yard line. Fourth down for Caney Creek. Vega doing the punting. Good high kick. Looks like it'll go out of bounds. We'll see where they're going to mark it. Looks like they'll mark it right at the 46 yard line of Caney Creek, and that's where the Grizzlies will take over, leading this one with 2.47 left on the clock. Appreciate you joining us tonight on the Conroe ISD Athletics Sports Channel on YouTube. A lot of football left to be played this year. I think one of the key matchups is going to be that uh, Woodlands Willis game coming up later in the season. Conroe has a very strong team this year as well. Handoff. Ball taken down to the 40 yard line. I'm sure. Uh, Grizzlies are going to let this ball, let that clock run. Wallace on the carry. Cook on the tackle for the Panthers. Yeah, you've got Willis and Conroe prior to this week sitting at 3-0. Woodlands is now 2-2. Two and two. have a whistle. Delay a game on the offense, number 11. Five yard penalty, second down. Don't have a score of that Willis-Conroe game, but I'm sure that was a barn burner. Second nine for, Grant, for the Grizzlies, working on the clock, trying to put this one to bed. And a uh, inadvertent snap there. Illegal procedure call. False start on the offense, number 71. Five yard penalty, second down. That'll push him back and make it. Uh, the game clock will start on the snap. Second and 14. We're getting that score of Willis and Conroe game. That's going to be a good, should be a good game. Looks like Willis is blowing that one open, 42 to 14. 
again, that makes that contest between the Woodlands and Willis later this year all the more important. Disconcerting signals on the defense for clapping to simulate the snap. Five yard penalty, second down. You don't hear that one very, very often. Now we're looking at second and 10. One forty-two left in the game. Second and 10. Grizzlies trying to put this one away. We'll get the ball down around the 42 yard line. It'll be third and about eight. Timeout, Caney Creek. Caney Creek. Last timeout of the half. Caney Creek calls timeout, trying to preserve some of that clock with third down. They can hold them on this fourth down, call another timeout, possibly get the ball back with a little time left on the clock. Take that back right now. The scoreboard shows no timeouts left for the Panthers. Third and seven. Handoff, breaks the tackle. Trying to get to that first down marker and he will not make it. Stayed in bounds, clock will continue to run. Caney Creek doesn't have any timeouts left. It'll be fourth down. And I'm sure the Grizzlies will run that 25 second clock down to its entirety. Might even take a penalty here. 15 seconds left on the play clock, 39 left on the game clock. I'll take that back, 58 seconds left on the game clock. That looks like they called timeout time out. with one second left. Grand Oaks, second timeout of the half. Creek will get the ball back with probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about 45 to 40 seconds left. I'm sure the Woodlands will be glad to know that they're going to be playing that game at home. Wood Forest Bank Stadium when they take on Willis later this year. the game will be streamed on the Conroe ISD Athletics Sports Channel. All right, Grizzlies back to punt. Hernandez doing the kicking, good high kick. It'll hit. Oh, beautiful kick. It'll be down at the one foot line. Looks like they're gonna mark it right at the one yard line. So the Panthers will have 40 seconds to go 99 yards.
Aguilar looking to throw, gonna throw a deep sideline pattern, got his receiver there and dropped incomplete. It's kind of been that kind of night, unfortunately, for the Panthers, missed opportunities, looked like the ball, let's see if we see the replay, looked like the ball may have hit him in the arms, couldn't bring it in. It'll be second and 10. 34 seconds left in the game. Got his receiver open in the flat, trying to stay on his feet, still on his feet. He'll be short of the first down. They're gonna mark him out at about the nine yard line. Ruffin on that reception and run. Clock now running. Caney Creek with no timeouts. Play of the game, last play of the game. And it will drop incomplete. So our final here at Buddy Moorhead Stadium in Conroe, Texas. The Caney Creek Panthers 7, Grand Oaks Grizzlies 13. Again, thank you for joining us tonight, and we'll see you on a future game. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field your 2023 Caney Creek High School Mighty Panther Band and Color Guard. The Mighty Panther Band is led onto the field by drum majors Paola Maldonado, Alexandra Lopez, and Michelle Santoyo. Freshman Band Member of the Week is Patrona Mendoza. Band Member of the Week is Samantha LeBlanc. Color Guard Member of the Week are Marilyn Arandondo and Cheyenne Stearman. The Mighty Panther Band will be performing their contest show, The Big Apple. The city so nice, they named it twice.
Special thanks to Jill Tanner, Heidi Swatzel, and the Caney Creek Theater Department. Special thanks to our sponsors, Old Houston